Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5.30. We did not know about it, um, but I mean, it was, it just, just weren't sure where to turn in at first. Congestion and confusion. That's what some people are saying about a major road project. And in the next few weeks, it will have an even bigger impact. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. The Main Avenue construction project in West Fargo started just a few weeks ago and could have a major impact on your route to the fair or 4th of July celebrations. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop joins us live with what you can expect to run into. Ashley? Expect delays is the big thing that you need to know if you're coming to the Red River Valley Fair or even to Bonanzaville. Main Avenue is down into one lane in each direction. Fair officials and Bonanzaville officials say that they knew this project would be an annoyance for their uh, visitors and drivers, but they hope that doesn't turn them away. What everyone needs to know is just to be prepared. Try getting out here, leaving your house at 530 and thinking you're going to be here by 6 to get in the gate. I would at least give yourself another half hour, 40 minutes to an hour. Schultz says even those who work at businesses nearby need to consider taking different routes home to help with traffic congestion. End about 4.30 to 5.30, and that's when everybody is leaving. And that could be 150 to 200 cars leaving each one of those places. So if you're thinking about coming down Main Avenue, heading out to the fair, it's going to just be all congested at that point in time. Schultz says drivers need to consider using 13th Avenue or the interstate. Brenda Warren with Bonanzaville says to take the same route for this weekend's July 4th celebration. Even though it'll slow traffic down, I hope that doesn't deter people from coming out. Warren says she feels the project is moving quickly and visitors are navigating their way through the orange cones. Just weren't sure where to turn in at first, but I mean, it, you do. there is a sign there, so... Just got to look out for that Bonanzaville sign on the arrow where to turn in. And it was fairly easy once you knew that the construction's here and that, you know, you just had that turn off just to go a little past it. Now, Bonanzaville plans to add additional signage for this weekend's July 4th celebration that is sponsored by Valley News Live. Now, the NDDOT says that drivers need to be alert and also uh, be prepared for different kind of uh, uh, construction zones, be prepared in the construction zones because the roads are different at this time. In West Fargo, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. All right, thank you, Ashley. And to get a look at all the suggested routes, click on this story at valleynewslive.com. We're having another hazy but quiet day in the region, but we're wondering if there's any rain behind those clouds. Let's head over to meteorologist Lisa Green to find out. Lisa. Thanks, Andrea. A couple of sprinkles, a couple of showers out there, but most of us enjoying a pleasant day. There is some haze. It's keeping temperatures down a little bit in some places, along with the clouds, too. Fargo Moorhead temperatures in the mid 70s. Up to the north, where we've enjoyed some more sunshine, northeast especially. Temperatures near 80 there. You can see a couple of green blips showing up on the radar, especially in our southwestern viewing area. And we may still be getting some sprinkles through the evening hours tonight. In Fargo Moorhead, Expect to see our temperatures staying in the 70s through the evening hours, eventually dipping back into the 60s tonight. It should be nice, quiet, and pleasant with a light southerly breeze. A perfect night to get out and perhaps even have a little barbecue. Hutch Johnson is joining us now from the Cashwise Backyard Barbecue. Hutch. Lisa, I got to tell you, the weather couldn't be more perfect. Once again, we're lucking out here at the Cashwise Backyard Barbecue, and we are in Fargo in Gordy Johnson's backyard. Tough ba last name to remember there, Gordy. Right. Tell me where you signed up. Cashwise on 13th Avenue. All right, now you got a big crowd here. They look hungry. Who'd you invite? I got a couple friends here and brother-in-law, nephew. Cool. Now, any, would you recommend that people sign up for this? Was it hard to get ready for? Did you have to do a lot of work? Not hardly at all. Just set up some tables and chairs and... Just put your name in the box. All right, very good. Those steaks are ready. There's one with your name on it, right. so you better get in line. Right. I got to tell you, things are off to a good start here at the Cashwise Backyard Barbecue. Can't wait to taste test one of these steaks for myself, Andrea. Back to the studio to you. Sounds good. Thanks, Hutch. <laughs> the family of NDSU student Tom Beerson is urging people to cooperate with law enforcement by taking lie detector tests. Greg Beerson contacted Valley News Live today after a friend of Tom's posted a plea on social media yesterday. In the statement, the family says it's time for everyone to work with law enforcement and bring justice to their son. Tom Beerson disappeared from North Fargo last fall and was later found murdered in Moorhead. 
If you would like to read the full statement, head to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. The Minnesota Attorney General has filed a lawsuit against Student Aid Center Incorporated. That's a Florida company that promised to help borrowers get their student loans forgiven. The company charged people as much as $1,500 for enrolling them in repayment plans or consolidation loans, which the borrower can apply for on their own for free through the U.S. Department of Education. The company is also accused of misrepresenting information to its customers. If you would like more information about the U.S. Department of Education's free loan repayment programs, head to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. After a year and a half of passionate debate, medical marijuana is now being sold in Minnesota. The latest numbers from the state health department show 65 patients having been approved to buy the medication, which comes in liquid and pill form. One woman has a 17-year-old son with epilepsy, and she says the medical marijuana could save his life. He has sometimes hundreds of seizures a day. Um, he has a lot of complications from that. So, I mean, if we can remove even, if we can have relief from even part of those, that could potentially um, increase his quality of life tremendously. Um, it, it could extend his life tremendously, quite frankly. I mean, it only takes one seizure to end a child's life. Two distribution centers open today. A total of eight, including one in Moorhead, will be open by the end of the year. With the holiday weekend just around the corner, many people will be heading to the lakes to enjoy time with family and friends. But before you hit the water, the North Dakota Game and Fish Department wants to remind us to be safe and that accidents can happen. They say one of the biggest problems on the water is that too often many people believe they're invincible. It's probably more of like a mentality of we're all going out there to have some fun in the sun, get near the water, enjoy some boating, some water and that kind of thing. But unfortunately, probably one of the biggest problems is, like, it can't happen to me. Here are some rules to be aware of. Children 10 and under are required to wear a life jacket. People doing water sports also need to wear one. And boats need to have them handy for all passengers on board. It's time again to travel around the Red River Valley to find another small town serving up some big, delicious flavors. Valley News Team's Christy Larson went to Flom this time. We're at the Flum Cafe, and I've been trying out some of the different foods, but I wanted to introduce you to Nikki Lundy, and let's talk about who exactly you guys are. We are a small town cafe in Minnesota that serves some really good food. Everything is made by scratch here, and I think that's what makes you guys unique is that you guys really put a lot of heart into each recipe. Yes, we do. And a lot of these recipes are from the previous owner, Carol, and also from my grandma. And everything has been passed down years and years. So if you're looking for a meal that feels like you're going home, this is the place. And I know you even have a specialty item that's only available in the fall and winter time. Yes, and that is potato dumplings that Carol comes in and makes every other Friday. Um, starting in the fall through the winter and early spring. But we also serve a variety of hot dishes, mashed potatoes and gravy every day with um, meat, which comes from our local butcher across the street. So everything is freshly made. We strive to have home-cooked meals. And I've also gotten a little peek at what the community is like here, and everyone just seems to get along with each other. And there's a lot of friends here who come and support you guys every day. Yes, it's definitely a community effort. We're all friends. I mean, like any little town, we have our disagreements, but we always come together and we support each other in everything we do. In Flum, Minnesota, Christy Larson, Valley News Live. If you know of a small town that has big flavor, you can email Christy at christyl at valleynewslive.com. Wheel of Fortune is coming to Fargo and you could be a contestant. The Wheelmobile event will take place during two special days of contestant searches. The event is sponsored by Shooting Star Casino but takes place at Shields Arena. You can come and audition to be on Wheel of Fortune this July. For details and rules, visit our website ndtoday.tv and click on the contest tab. Bonanzaville needs your help in getting a new church from Christine, North Dakota, up to the historic tourist attraction in West Fargo. 
So far, they have raised more than $52,000, but they need $150,000 to make the move. Last July, fire heavily damaged the St. John's Church at Bonanzaville, and it had to be torn down and hauled away. Officials estimate the 30-mile move for the new church will cost $3,000 per mile. Bonanzaville hopes to raise enough money to move the church before snow arrives. We don't want to spend money until we have the money, and that's why we're waiting. You know, we want the money in hand so that we know that here's the money and it's ready to move. Officials say all donations are welcome, and if you would like to contribute, you can write a check to Bonanzaville or sponsor a mile needed for the move.